The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall... I imagine at one time or another, we've all suffered through a distorted dream of running away from someone without knowing who is chasing us. We tear up the road in the grip of some uncontrollable fear. Many is a time I've awakened in a cold sweat, thankful it was all a dream. But supposing it were not a nightmare, but real people in real life being hounded to death by persons unknown. Such is our story today. Our drama, The Face in the Coffin, written especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agate Jr., stars Christopher Tabori and Roberta Maxwell. say that Washington, D.C. is like any other city in America, that it has people from all walks of life trying to make ends meet, people trying to get ahead, raise their children right, and so on. But it isn't. Washington is a one-company, one-business town, and the business is U.S. Government, Inc. And sooner or later, most people within and without the city's limits find themselves enmeshed in that company's business, like Tim and Kathy Doyle. It started with a call on the telephone. May I speak to Mr. Doyle, please? My husband's not home right now. This is Mrs. Doyle. Mrs. Doyle, this is Mr. Stairwell of the Bethesda Funeral Home. Funeral Home? You're calling about Tim's Aunt Emma, aren't you? Precisely. I want Mr. Doyle to know his aunt is ready now, and that if you both would like to come along and see her, you could get a good look before the service is on Thursday. This evening would be fine all around, Mrs. Doyle. We're open until ten. Uh, this evening? Uh, let me talk to my husband about it. I'll see he gets in touch with you. What did you say your name was? Stairwell. Like in Farewell. I'll tell him. Hello? Is there anyone here? Kathy, are you sure that funeral director said they'd be open until ten tonight? Tim, I don't like this place. Did we have to come over this evening? It could have waited till tomorrow. I told you, Kathy, tomorrow is impossible. I'll be even more jammed up than today. That's what my job in the Department of Justice is. Late hours, all hours, any hours, any time. I wish you'd stayed on as an assistant in drugs and narcotics enforcement. Are you going to give me that you're working too hard routine again? I'm sorry. I guess it's just that I hate a funeral parlor, especially at night. It's so spooky. Honey, we have no choice. I wouldn't feel right about not paying my respects to Aunt Emma. <clears throat> yes? Oh, you frightened me. I'm Mr. Stairwell. Have you come to make an arrangement or to view a deceased? I believe you called my wife about Aunt Emma. Uh, well, we've come to... See her. I, I know it's late, but you said it was okay. Oh, yes, Miss Emma Doyle. Uh, could you wait a few moments? I'm a little busy right now. We can come back tomorrow. Actually, we weren't going to stay too long. Well, in that case, you really don't need me, and I am quite occupied... This is that time of year, you know. No kidding. It's seasonal. Down that hallway to your right. All the way to the end, turn left, and it's the first open door on your right. Lovely woman. Terrible loss. You'll excuse me? Tim, wasn't he peculiar? Lovely woman. Terrible loss. <laughs> I bet he never even knew Aunt Emma. Probably says it to everyone. Okay. Let's go, Kathy. Take the hallway to the left. No, no. Hallway to the right. Is that what he said? Hallway to the right, and it's the first open door on your left. You sure? Well, let's walk it and see. All these doors. Do you think there's a real person behind each door? You mean an unreal person. You know what I mean. Oh. 
Well, now what? Turn to the right? Is that it? No. To the left. I'm positive. Turn left, and it's the first open door on the right. Or turn right, and it's the first open door on the left. Oh, look, Tim. On the other side of the potted palm, there's an open door. I'm right behind you. Tim, can't I just stay over here by the door? Oh, no, I don't, I don't want to look in at Aunt Emma alone. Now, come on, hon. It's a sign of respect. Oh, good Lord. We're in the wrong room. That's not Aunt Emma. I beg your pardon. What are you two doing in here? Well, you told us the first open door, so, so we went in. On your right. This is your left. Don't you know your left from your right? I'll ask you to leave the premises immediately. But we haven't seen Aunt Emma yet. Immediately, do you hear? Or are you deaf as well as not knowing your right from your left? Go out that door. I've gone through this newspaper page for page twice already. And there's not a word. Son of a gun. Not a word about what, Tim? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing. Something I was looking for in this evening's paper. Some new Justice Department case? Not exactly. But it could be something a lot of government people would like to know. If it's true. I can't understand it. Why are you so mysterious, Tim? Honest, Kathy. I'll tell you as soon as I know for sure, okay? Right now, I'm just as much in the dark as anyone. Now, listen, Chick. Do you mind if I don't stay up and talk? I've got a heavy schedule tomorrow. Of course not, darling. You don't mind if I stay up and read, do you? This book is absolutely fascinating. It's about something in wartime called Operation Mirror. A government official who has a double so he's protected in case somebody wants to kill him. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll see you in the morning, Kath. Shovel your breakfast down so fast. You don't have to be in the office until 8.30. I know, but I thought I'd get there early, pick up all the morning papers on my way. Has it something to do with that man with the beard and the scar we saw in Aunt Emma's casket last night? Something to do with what? Who? That body in the viewing room when we went to see Aunt Emma. Oh, so you did see him? Yes, I did. So? Okay, have it your own way. I'll ask you some other time when you're in a better mood. I'll get it. Hello? Hello? Who is this? Tim? Tim, will you come here? What is it, Kathy? Come here right away, please. Oh, what's the matter? Who rang the phone? They hung up. Well, who was it? I don't know. I said hello, and there was no answer. All I could hear was this heavy breathing at the other end. And then a click when they hung up. Julian, do you mind if I come in for a moment? Of course not, Tim. Close the door behind you and drag up a chair. I would have waited for the daily briefing, but I thought I'd better ask you this privately. Well, what's so hush-hush, Tim? What's the latest on the Garden Development Corporation's case? You mean that uh, bunch who were trying to put up a multi-million dollar casino complex outside of D.C.? Yeah, that's the one. Is Judge Kroll still on it? So far as I know, we're counting on him. When the verdict's in, there'll be a hue and cry in Washington like you haven't heard since Watergate. We got Garden Development by the throat. It's an obvious front for a billion dollar gambling ripoff. The timetable? Well, we've made our case for the government, and Judge Kroll is taking three weeks off to decide which book to throw at them. That's usual. He's... He's all right, is he? All right in what way? He's fishing up at his place in the Springs. You're sure? Well, you have reason to believe he's somewhere else? No, no, no. Something I... I happened to run into last night. Well, wherever he is, he's easy to recognize... That famous scar of his, and, you know, he's tried to hide that with that beard. Yeah, well, I just thought I'd check with you on how far the case had gone. We'll win. No question. This garden development scheme has been put together by some very smooth operators. 
a couple of business leaders and congressmen who I suspect are on the take. We'll see what the judge has to say when he wraps his gavel for order. Julian, thanks a lot. I know how busy you are. Oh, uh, Tim, how's Kathy? She's fine. You tell her I was asking after her. See you at the briefing. Like something to drink? Stay well? I'll have a whiskey on the rocks, Senator Henderson. Okay, help yourself. Yeah, I always have an extra bar up here on deck. This is a beautiful yacht you have here. Oh, yeah, the best. <laughs> That's all I want out of life. Uh, now, stairwell, I had you come aboard because this is the only private place I know of in Washington where we can talk without being observed. I understood that when I got your message. Uh, 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 first of all, uh, how is our deceased friend? I was going to ask you. What do you wish me to do with him, Senator? Oh, well... I'm making arrangements to have him photographed. I'll let you know the day. As uh, soon as that's done, I'd say cremation. Uh, what do you think, Stairwell? Can you uh, get some papers together? Uh, uh, false identity, doctor's certificate, that sort of thing? I don't understand why you want pictures of the deceased. He's been photographed so many times. Magazines, newspapers... Uh, Stairwell... <laughs> Do you suppose when they wish to make a wax copy of a personage for Madame Tussauds uh, that they use any old magazine photographs, hmm? You're making a wax effigy of Judge Kroll? In a few weeks, Judge Kroll was to hand down a verdict which in all probability would have gone against myself and my associates. Coles would have been raked. Uh, reputations ruined. Well, as fortune would have it, when I went to visit the judge at his cabin in the springs, I found him on the floor. Uh, as you know, he'd passed away. Heart attack. I, I saw the advantage and took it. Called you, arranged for the embalming, etc. Uh, we are engaging a gentleman who is the spit and image of the judge. We shall coach him to be the judge. He will appear in court, claim a sore throat, and render a verdict in our favor. On paper. The photos are to assure us we have not left a mole unmarked, and the duplicate scar is exact. <laughs> Only you, Stairwell, will know that the judge is stretched out in your funeral establishment. Only you. Senator, I don't know how to say this, but you see, you have just said... Uh, uh, I have just said... What? That no one but you and I know the judge is deceased. Uh, but I'm afraid someone does. What? A man and his wife came to the funeral home, Senator, the night before last to pay their respects to a relative... By accident, they happened to see the remains of Judge Kroll. How could you be so stupid? It was entirely my fault. What were you doing letting any visitors who come off the street wander around your premises, Darewell? Who were these two people? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. T Timothy Doyle. Doyle, Doyle, Doyle. He's with the Justice Department, uh, a research and assistant counsel. Uh, justice? <laughs> now I've heard everything. And now, you stare well, you hear this, and hear it clearly. I am not going to pass this along to my associates. This matter is strictly between you and me. I don't care how you do it, but I do care when you do it. I shall be following the obituaries and the star and the post quite carefully. And unless Mr. and Mrs. Doyle appear in those columns very soon, <laughs> your name will... Unknowingly, a young couple have unlocked the door of a secret. They have encountered the wheels of a juggernaut, which, when in motion, could crush them. More when I return shortly with Act Two. A hundred.
hundred years ago, Henry James, a writer I greatly admire, wrote, Life is a battle. Evil is insolent and strong. Goodness is apt to be weak. Folly, very apt to be defiant. Wickedness, to carry the day. The world as it stands is no illusion, no evil dream of the night. We wake up to it forever and ever. This morning, when Kathy Doyle awoke, it seemed that horror and dread were peering over her shoulders. You do understand, Tim, don't you? I felt I just had to get out of the house. I sort of understand, Kathy. I'm enjoying driving up this morning to Big Hunting Creek. I like the view of the waterfall. We can picnic. But I don't know. I thought weekends. You like staying at home. I do, Tim. But the last few days... I know this sounds weird, but when I'm home alone, I get the feeling I'm being watched. I, I got to shift in a second. This is a pretty steep grade. Hey, look at that fool, speeding down the hill towards us. He's crazy. Oh, a drunk. Look at him, weaving all over the road. <gasps> Did you see that? I kept my eyes closed and grabbed my seatbelt. That was a near miss, inches. Good thing he was on the outside and we were on the mountainside. Tim, what's that in the road up ahead? Oh, no, son of a gun. Well, there goes lunch by the waterfall. What is it? It's a roadblock. I better pull up and stop. There are branches and trees pulled right across the road. Some local is telling us there's danger up there. Does that mean we can't go any further? If we're smart. Somebody went to the trouble of warning us. <laughs> this is a lousy spot to turn around in. The road's so narrow, I'll have to inch back and forth. Well, here goes. Aren't you getting awfully close to the edge, Tim? You know any other way to make it? so disappointed we have to go all the way back downhill. Maybe we'll find another place to picnic. Sure. You made that turn so well, Tim. Well, the secret is to keep calm and cool and know what you're doing. It's like driving on ice. You have to know how to handle your car. Now, for instance, right now, you see how much steeper it's getting? So we downshift. Wouldn't the brakes hold? Oh, sure they will. But this makes for less wear and tear. Having the motor hold her back helps, you understand? Tim, um, there's that car again, down there where the road makes an S. Do you see it? Oh, that same car driven by that same crazy man. Will you look at him, coming up this way, lickety-split? Tim, I'm afraid he's, he's weaving all over the road again, only this time we're on the outside. Tim, honk him, he's coming right at us. Move over, you crazy fool, get over on your side. What's he doing, trying to kill us? Take it easy, Kath. Kath, we're okay. But we're picking up speed. Don't go downhill so fast. I, I can't... I, I can't get the brakes to hold. They're, they're not holding. I'm pumping, but they're not... The, the emergency, it's come right out. Tim, do something. Are you buckled in with your safety belt? Yes, yes. Now listen, you see that thick mat of bushes sticking out of the side of the mountain down there? I'm heading for those. Uh, if I make it right, maybe they'll hold the car back. Keep it from rolling down any further. No, Tim, that's on your side. You'll be killed. No, I won't, honey. Believe it. Kathy? Kath? Uh, I'm all right, I think. Nothing feels broken. Can you unbuckle your safety belt? I... I can't reach around there. It got all twisted. We've got to get out of this car, but fast. Now, hold still. I'll try to reach around over you and unbuckle it. Yeah, there. You're free. Now, Kathy, can you reach over and open your door? I... I think so. Well, hurry, baby, hurry. Okay, now, get out as fast as you can and run straight downhill. You see where that big rock sticks out? Get him back of that. What about you? I'll be right behind you. <sighs> okay, now, down here behind this boulder. Oh. Oh. What happened? The gas tank exploded. so good to be home again with my feet up on the sofa. I'm still shaking all over. Me too. Oh, Tim, what would I have done without you? The way you handled everything, you were incredible. Well, when someone's out to get you, you find yourself doing things you didn't know you could. Is that what you think? Because I think so too. 
We're on somebody's list, like they say in the gangster movies. I don't see any other reason, Calf. No emergency brake comes apart in your hand unless it's been messed with. I knew it. I knew it. And when I hit the foot brake, it went right down to the floor. Nothing. Someone drained all the brake fluid, leaving us just enough to drive up part of the way. Can you think of anyone who would do that to you? Is there something you found out about someone in your research? I don't know. A 150-year-old treaty between the USA and the Indians? No, I don't see that. It could be all mistaken identity. Like in the book, Operation Mirror. Not you, but someone who looks like you. Tim, what are we going to do? We haven't done anything to anybody. How did you like the movie, Kathy? I loved it, Tim, but I like this better. Mmm. I haven't sat in a drugstore for a chocolate ice cream soda since I don't know when. We have to just keep going, Kathy. And pray that it's all coincidence or a mistake. It isn't, Tim, and we both know it. Okay, hon. You finished? Yep. Let's walk home. It's a nice, clear night. You see, it didn't rain after all. Yeah, the radio said it would. Wait till I pay the man for the sodas. Tim, imagine running into you. I saw you and Kathy at the Beacon. How are you two? Julian. We're recovering. That was some hair-raising accident you two had. What brings you to Bethesda this time of night? Hmm, same thing that brought you two out of hiding. That horror picture at the Beacon. Tim, I'm going to ask Charlie whether we can give you a little special protection. I don't like the smell of this. No, no, we don't need that. Julian is right. Something is rotten here. I insist on it, Tim. Uh, did the insurance company tell you when you'll get your money for the car? <laughs> you kidding? Well, let me give you a lift then. No, no, no. We thought we'd walk. Tim, I, I wouldn't mind a lift home. I'm kind of tired. I'm parked just around the corner. I want to walk. It'll do us good. Good night, Julian. Good night. See you Monday. Why didn't you let Julian give us a lift home? I can't explain it, Kathy. It was as if a voice inside of me was saying, don't get into Julian's car. Your own boss at the department? What do you suspect him of? I don't know. Maybe I'm in such a state I see an enemy in every shadow. Timothy Doyle, I don't want you to say any more. Let's just enjoy our walk. See? The moon's out. Rain tonight. Ha! Doesn't the public library look beautiful at night? Like an old Greek temple. Wouldn't you know it? I left the umbrella in the movie house. I better run back and get it. Shall I wait for you here? Uh, no, no. You might as well come along. Let's jog, okay? Oh! Oh, Tim! Look back there where we were just standing. Oh, mother of mercy. A great walloping piece of marble fell down from the roof and smashed on the street. If we'd been standing there... Right where we were. Hold on to me, Tim. I'm getting real scared now. If we hadn't turned around and run back to get your umbrella... One second later... We would have been crushed to death. Must have been a nasty shock, that parapet missing you by inches. Julian, the second close call in three days. It's no coincidence. I don't know, maybe a contract's out to get rid of us. But we're the wrong people. We just happen to look like who they want to get rid of. Possible. If you rule out accidents or coincidence. It could be mistaken identity. Then there's this book she's been reading about doubles used in wartime. Operation Mirror. It's still going on, Tim. There isn't a world leader who doesn't have a double to make an appearance at some function. Most of them don't have to say anything. Just get off the plane, get photographed, ride in a parade, review troops. Any public appearance that might be dangerous. Julian, you're the only person I can level with. I can't even talk about this to Kathy. I don't want to frighten her. A couple of weeks ago, we went to see the remains of my Aunt Emma in a funeral home in Bethesda. And somehow, got into the wrong viewing room. There was a man in that coffin. I recognized his face right away. It 
was Judge Crow. Did you say Crow? The one who's handing down the decision on the garden development case? I could swear to it. Now, supposing no one's supposed to know he's dead. Supposing when the courtroom reconvenes, his double comes out and renders a verdict favorable to those gangsters. And because by accident you saw the real Judge Kroll in a casket, a contract is out on you two. Does that sound far-fetched? I'll have the department send somebody around to that funeral home. Yeah, the director's name is Stairwell. You better be picked up, too. Tim, there are millions at stake. This was the cleanest federal warrant we ever issued. Uh, how about Kathy? I'm having a father move in with us. He's a widower and he always likes to come and visit. Uh, there's one other thing. Do you mind if I take the rest of the week off? I've got an idea... And I'd like to follow it up. Tim, don't get in their way. All I ask is, do your darndest to stay alive. I have every intention. A great deal has been written about and said about money. That it's something a fool is soon parted with. It's the root of all evil, and so on. Generally, there is agreement. It makes a good servant but a bad master. For those of us who like to unearth clues and solve mysteries, there's plenty of evidence that Tim and Kathy Doyle are being fingered so that someone's desires for money will not be thwarted. I shall return shortly with Act Three. Time unimportant. For Tim Doyle, it's later than he thinks. The place, a secluded spot Washingtonians call the Springs. As Tim's rented car pulls up, he can see a cabin in the woods. And beyond that, a bearded man in waders, fishing midstream. No one else is in sight. You there. Where are you going? My name is Timothy Doyle. I've come to see Judge Kroll. Yeah. What makes you think the judge wants to see you? Uh, who are you? Do you have any identification? Certainly. Have a look. Uh -huh. Oh, indeed. Justice Department. Is the uh, judge expecting you? Senator Henderson. The judge doesn't have a telephone up here. And you and I both know it. He could scarcely get away for a few weeks quiet fishing if he had a phone. Uh-huh. So you uh, know me, do you? There isn't a person in the country who doesn't, Senator. He's uh, over there fishing. May I have my ID card back, please? Uh, Mr. Doyle, I'm going to show it to Judge Kroll to ask whether he would like to see you. I'll ask him myself. Uh, oh, no, you won't. The judge has asked me to keep people away from him. And I intend to do just that. I need to see him before he arrives in court next Tuesday. Uh, then, my dear Mr. Doyle, you will have to go through channels. Are you the only one here, Senator, besides the judge? <laughs> Why do you ask? If I'm not mistaken, there's a man standing in the window of that cabin. I see something glinting in the sunlight, like the barrel of a gun. Uh, you may see a man, but a gun? No. Uh... The judge has a handyman who works around the place, and he's just probably getting the noon meal ready. I was just about to call the judge to tell him to come in when you drove up. So, if you would be so good as to turn your car around now and go back where you came, I would appreciate it. Come along to the court on Tuesday. Perhaps after the judge has rendered his verdict, he will speak to you. Was that, Senator? That young friend of yours, Stairwell. The one who leads a charmed life. Timothy Doyle? Here? <laughs> You're asking yourself the same questions I did. Why didn't you get him a little closer to the cabin? I could have picked him off with this rifle. Ha! <laughs> what a brilliant idea. Think of the explaining I'd have to do with the authorities. Why we ever took you in with us is beyond me. It could have been a hunting accident. Doyle, 
out here hunting without a rifle? <clears throat> you cannot seem to understand. Doyle and his wife are the only ones who have seen the judge's body. If one of them dies mysteriously, the other is going to talk. It was bad enough. I had to be here when he showed up. You can tell our bearded actor he can get out of the water now. I think he's coming along just fine. You see, the judge is cremated, name disguised, Board of Health, all the necessary papers are in. Mm -hmm. We're in the clear. Yeah, well, it's your job to finish off the Doyles. Like it or not. Senator, I've tried. Honest, I have. But I'm not a hit man. You made the mistake of letting them into the wrong room. You've got to answer for that. Or take the consequences. Oh, there's nothing like a Saturday morning. Tim, how can you be so relaxed and cheery? I'm always cheery on weekends. I'm home with you. Why shouldn't I be happy? Tim, what are we going to do? About what? You know, threats. Your father's upstairs. Across the street is an operative from justice protecting us. We're as safe as we can be, honey. Do you think any of this is somehow connected with that ugly man in the coffin? The one with the beard? I thought you didn't see him. I did. I didn't want to remember him. Some connection. It's possible. But I don't see how. Who do you suppose was in that coffin? Tim, I asked you a question. I heard you. Don't try being evasive with me. Do you know who that dead man was? Did you recognize that face in the coffin? Not positively. That's the truth, Kathy. But you have an idea. It's such a wild idea anyway. You know, the insurance people said they'd put a form for me to sign for the car in the mail. Let's go see if it's come. Coming? Uh-huh. I agree with you. It's a gorgeous day. Oh, Tim, um, before we go to the mailbox, I want to have another look at that hole in our big oak. I think robins are building a nest there. At this time of year? Let's cut across the lawn. Oh, this big oak gets wider and thicker every year. Look, the both of us can hide behind it now. There it is. See the nest? Oh, hey, the mail is in. Bellman's picked up the letter I left there and put the flag back down. That's what I call a big nest. Huge. I bet you half a dozen robins will be born there. <laughs> will you look at that squirrel? He's climbing right up our mailbox. <laughs> it's a neat darling. He's sitting right on top of it. <laughs> He's trying to get at the latch and open it. <laughs> Maybe he thinks someone sent him some nuts. <laughs> guard from the Justice Department. He's getting out of his car. What good is he to us? Someone planted a bomb in our mailbox. Don't you understand? That man was sitting there, probably watching him, doing nothing. It wasn't a squirrel they were hoping to kill. Tim, you've got to do something. I can't stand this anymore. <laughs> speaking. Tim, is that you? Yes, Kathy. Is everything all right? Yes, it is. I thought I'd just like to talk to you. Did you tell Julian what happened Saturday? He's not in yet. But you know, I told him everything on the phone Saturday. The police have been here for the umpteenth time. And what about the man from Justice? Well, his car is gone. And your dad? Is he okay? Yeah. I just sent him out to do some shopping. Tim, it's so hard to pretend to him that it was all a mistake. I'll get home early, honey. Don't you worry about anything. And you don't mind my calling you at the office on a busy Monday morning? Of course not, darling. Anytime. Bye, Kath. Bye, Tim. Oh. <clears throat> yes, what is it? Oh, aren't you the funeral director, Mr... Stairwell. I've come to apologize, Mrs. Doyle. Apologize? What for? I don't blame you for keeping this front door on a chain and not letting me in. I treated you and your husband pretty shabbily. 
And I drove all the way out here to tell you so. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Stairwell. Of course, you can come in. Please, please. It, it was all a misunderstanding. We've had a lot worse things happen to us since Aunt Emma turned out to be someone else. Our living room is right over here to your left. That's another thing I want to apologize for. How could I have misdirected you into a viewing room where my own dear father lay in state? My fault entirely. The bearded man in that casket was your father? Yes, poor man. He had a hard life. Well, now, now that I've apologized, I do have a problem, Mrs. Doyle. You know, we placed your aunt's casket in your husband's family vault. I went by there yesterday, and it's become quite dangerous. It ought to be looked at. Dangerous? Really? I don't think Tim will be free to go to the cemetery before next Saturday. Can it wait till then? You want my honest opinion? No, it's filling up with water. I'd say three or four inches a day. That's awful. We have to do something. If you'd like, uh, we could go out there right now. I have my vehicle outside. Would you take me? Mr. Sterrell, that's so thoughtful. Just let me get my bag and I'll be right with you. This is the first time I've ever ridden in a hearse. Up front, it's not at all uncomfortable. If you'll forgive a bad joke, Mrs. Doyle, I've never had a complaint from a passenger in the back either. Well, here we are. This is the East Gate. Oh, dear. I never thought I'd be visiting this cemetery so soon again. Let's hope it'll be the last time. I'll get the door for you. Let me see. Um, the vault is right behind that big poplar tree. Am I right? Before we go into the cemetery, would you mind turning around, Mrs. Doyle? (gasps) You've got a gun. Yes, I have, and it's loaded. Mr. Stairwell, what are you going to do? You see that public telephone right by the gate? I want you to walk in there slowly. Attract no attention. And call your husband. Tim, it's Kathy again. We talked an hour ago. Is anything wrong? What did you say? I I said, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right, Timothy. Well, then why are you calling me? You just stay snug as a bug at home. Keep the chain on the door and don't go out. But I'm already out. You are? Where are you? I'm at the cemetery. What cemetery? Why are you there? Tim, there's something very wrong with the family vault. Can you come out here right now? Kathy, I'm terribly busy. I have days and days of work to make up. What's wrong? Can you tell me about it when I get home tonight? I can't go home now, Tim. The vault is filling up with water. I don't know what to do about it. Please, Tim. Okay, okay. I'll be there. And maybe on the way here, Tim, you better stop off at home and feed Buster. Okay, Kath. Will do. There, I did it. I wish you'd point that gun in another direction. We're fortunate. The cemetery is deserted now. Get out of the booth, Mrs. Doyle. Where to? Into the vault. Kathy! Kathy, where are you? Go on. Tell him in here. Kathy! Call out to him. Tim, I'm in here, in the vault. Kathy... Who is this? He made me call you. Up with your hands, Mr. Doyle. Stand next to Mrs. Doyle. I'll try and make this as quick and painless as possible. Aren't you, Mr. Stairwell, from the funeral parlor? Stand still. You're mad. You can't shoot a pistol in here. Your eardrums will burst. Be quiet and stand still. Mr. Stairwell, can you hear those sirens? Huh? It's the police. The police? So long, Mr. Stairwell. Look at him go. 
Oh, darling. I hope this is the end of it. I couldn't stand another one of these things. Shh, 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 honey. It's all right. Well, he made the hearse. This is the police. You come out of that hearse and drop that gun. Oh, Tim, darling, I knew I could count on you. When you phoned with that message for Buster, I knew exactly what to do. They're taking Mr. Stairwell away. <laughs> Take a good luck, honey. It isn't often you see a funeral director on his way to his own. <laughs> Was he the Mr. Big of this whole thing? I don't think so. But he'll want to save his own skin, so he'll lead the police to him. That was some ripoff, engineered by some very shiny brass. But they were weak in one department. They were? In their research department. They never found out that Buster wasn't a dog, but your brother on the police force. I guess we can all breathe a sigh of relief. Finding oneself at the wrong end of a gun for the wrong reasons could and has happened. If you cannot get help, try helping yourself. Keep cool and use your head. And remember a couple of tricks you learned on Mystery Theater. I'll be back for a few words shortly. famous, whose name escapes me, has said, it's not death that frightens me, it is dying. The known does not alarm me, the unknown does. So be not frightened of enigmas, secrets, or mysteries. Look sharp, be strong, and say to yourself, he who fears being conquered is sure of defeat. Napoleon said that, and look what happened to him. Our cast included Roberta Maxwell, Christopher Tabori, Bob Caliban, and Fred Gwynn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.